Greetings to you all. This is my second day here at IAC 2025 and I'm continuing to explore all the exciting tech brands presented here this year. As a big enthusiast of immersive audio, I couldn't miss the opportunity to speak with business development director for Home and EACT, Nick Fitcher. I know that last year Elacoustic uh, introduced a new solution called Hyris. Yes. I'm sure that uh, viewers who are interested in immersive audio would love to hear more about it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Hyris is a new solution from Elacoustics where we have um, got together different products from the Elacoustics portfolio and different technologies and brought them together to create one solution that can be used in residential applications, marine applications, but also corporate applications, hospitality, retail, etc. It's not just limited to the home and yacht verticals, but it's very well suited to the home and yacht verticals. It's a solution which has our loudspeakers in it, it has our subwoofers in it, it has our amplified controllers in it. But where the real magic comes is we use the ELISA processor. ELISA is, uh, stands for El Acoustics Immersive Sound Art. This processor has been used in live events uh, like ABBA Voyage um, in London, um, residencies like uh, Adele that had in Las Vegas. Also, um, Janet Jackson is currently using it in Las Vegas um, in Resorts World Theatre, which is pretty cool. Um, and touring artists as well like Mark Knopfler, Bonnie Bear and various others have, have used that technology as well. But what we're doing with it in Hyris is we're using it to create and change the spaces for how you want to use it. Within the world of residential, you're very passionate about cinema and course, movies. Yes. Um, we, you know, I love uh, cinemas and, and, and movies as well, and El Acoustics are, are, are very good products, um, you know, to fit within those spaces because they, they have very good dispersion characteristics, they have high SBL, big dynamic range. But the problem with a cinema room, if we look at it in that context, is it can only be used really for watching movies. It's not necessarily a multifunctional space. That can take up a lot of real estate. So what if you wanted to use that room for other things? How could we do that? So the idea and the approach with Hyris is that depending on the application of how you're using that room, you can change its characteristics. So one of the technologies of Hyris is called Anima. Anima allows us to take the inputs that's coming into the ELISA process that could be mono, could be stereo, could be uh, Dolby Atmos, could be DTS, any of the formats, and we can move it anywhere we want within 360 degrees of that space. And we've got a, a, an example of those technologies here that we're showing at the show. If you are you know, listening to Atmos music, you don't necessarily want a big black rectangle on the wall with the TV in front of you. You might want to be facing another area of the room. So basically the concept of main listening position does not exist. It does not exist areas. because we have speakers all around the space mm -hmm. and they're all the same speakers. So the sound is exactly the same. You know, it's not like where we would have, you know, three biggers for the LCR at the front and then smaller for the surround and smaller again perhaps for the overheads. It's the same all the way around. And that means that we can say, okay, well now I want to listen to it facing this way or this way or this way or this way. And as I said, that can be uh, any different format. And I think that's it's really showing the flexibility of, of how these spaces c can use. Also, if you've got just stereo content being played, you know, on a traditional system, if you're entertaining in that space, you're, you know, you've got guests over and you're having a party, you don't, if it's just in stereo, the people that are next to the speakers are going to, you know, kind of be getting music thumping away next to them. Yeah, yeah. And then that becomes a bit distracting. Um, and then the people at the far end of the room aren't necessarily getting a good experience at all because there's all the people mm -hmm. in between those speakers. What Anima can also do is it can spatialize content. We call it spatialized rather than upmix because upmix it's just really adding reverb to the content that's going in and, and moving some of those effects to fixed positions. With Anima, it's moving the content all around the room. So there is no sweet spot. Everyone is in the sweet spot. Okay. That's, I th again, I think truly unique. And then if you wanted to a cinema, you've been into a lot of the big commercial cinemas and stuff <laughs> oh, like that. I'm yeah. very jealous that you get to see the behind the scenes of those things. And they're always very dry rooms. You know, they're treated because you yeah, want exactly. a dry room yeah. Yeah. to 
enjoy cinematic content, music content. But if you want to play live music within that space, it could be a piano, it could be a flute, a violin, anything, guitar. You want there to be a bit more life in that yeah, space. Yeah, exactly. The space cannot be too dead, too it, acoustically it, it, dead. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So yeah. we have another technology, which is part of Pyrus, called Ambience. And that uses microphones that are in a grid across the ceiling to amplify the natural reverb of the room. And you can recall different presets to make the space sound different again for that use case basically it can be used as a uh like real life uh, acoustic space emulator or... it, it, exactly yeah so, so you know you want it to sound like a concert hall we can make that happen if mm -hmm. you want it to sound i don't know like a bathroom you know people like to sing in the shower right you, okay, could, you yeah. could you could you could do that it's it's very yeah, flexible I, I just wanted to say if you're a opera singer you may replicate the La Scala or, yeah, or something exa in, exa exa in, your, exactly. in your living room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow, yeah, that that's, sounds really exciting. Is there any new acoustic products which were introduced uh, especially for uh, for Hyris? So w w within the within the high resolution, the loudspeakers, depending on the size and the space of the room, we mm -hmm. would pick different loudspeakers from oh. the portfolio. So it's completely customizable. Completely yeah. customizable. Yeah. Um, you can start the smallest room can be is about forty five square meters. Okay. Um, we have on our booth here a much smaller space than that. We've managed to get a lot of the technologies working. It's pretty convincing. Oh, okay. It's not a high risk but it's the technologies of it to, to kind of tease, to get people to come to London, um, to the, where we've got the showroom there. Um, so, and we're using XXIs there for that demonstration, which worked really, really well. And we have X4Is on the ceiling as well with a single Siva sub. In London, we use the Soka loudspeakers paired with SB10 mm -hmm. subwoofers um, because it's a much bigger space. It's about 90 square meters. And then we've got XXIs for the height channels in that space as well. So. And you can go bigger, bigger, So bigger. If, if someone has a bigger space, Sivas can be used as well. Absolutely. And, yeah, uh, yeah if, if you want to scale and go really mm -hmm. big, if it's a big corporate space or something, like think like a, um, a ballroom in a hotel or a convention yeah, center or something yeah, yeah. like that, where, you know, one day they're hosting a wedding in there, there's a live band, there's a DJ, something like that. Mm -hmm. But then the next day it's a corporate you know company coming in there and 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 doing a sales presentation or something like that you know you would need to have possibly line array technology for that so you might be using you know caras you could be using um kiva from our range you could be using any of the products but as long as they're the same all the way around mm. you can we can still use hybrids so typically how many speakers have to be around you to achieve uh, so I, the, I, that experience ideally you want to have a speaker with about one and a half meter gap in between each loudspeaker. Mm. The reason for that is because when you're spatializing content, if there's big gaps in between them, then you suddenly feel gaps. It's not immersive. <laughs> yeah. Um, so you know, it's an ideal situation is is one and a half meters. The, you know, the closer they are, the better. Um, but of course, if the space is really big and you've got wide dispersion from the products. Mm you know, you, you can you can cover things in different ways as well. So we're all familiar with the standard uh, home cinema layouts like uh, 7.1, 0.4. Mm -hmm. uh, as a comparison, uh, what are the numbers? Yeah, uh, I mean, so, so, so right, what we've got here at the show, it's a 10.1.5 setup. We did that partly because we have a 16 channel amplifier. So we thought okay. we may as well use all the, all the channels, you know, Depending on, again, the orientation and the shape of the room and things like that, it, it, it depends. But if you had a space like that in real life, you would probably add more subwoofers and try okay. and have one on each corner always of the wall. More subs, always better. Yeah, <laughs> e e exactly. And again, that just means that when you pan around the room, you still have that same equal feeling. You don't, because obviously low end frequencies are omnidirectional. Um, but it's quite amazing the when you do have subwoofers all around you and we go back to Highgate, each soaker has two SB10s okay. to it. Mm. They're basically joined in our software as being one full range loudspeaker. And they also get the LFE channel as well. So when you're mm. watching Atmos content, for example, even though the AV processor is spitting out 7.1.4, our processor will then say, okay, what we need to do is map that to the loudspeaker layout of the room. So in Highgate, we have, I think, 16 loudspeakers uh, mm -hmm. in, in the round, uh, and then, you know, 34 subwoofers or something like that. So, 
when even if it's just 7.1.4, the point one, mm -hmm. we're still using all 34 subwoofers. We're hearing all these numbers of speakers, so like 16 speakers, so a person would be saying, oh my God, so how many amplifiers do I need to, to yep. feed all, all, all of the speakers? Uh, so within the space in London, we have three of our um, LA7.69 amplifiers. Uh, so, so they're 16 mm -hmm. channels. Um, they take up two rack units, so they're, mm -hmm. they're, they're, they're very, they're not very big. Um, they're heavy. Um, <laughs> you know, having, uh, having lifted them on um, Monday when we did set up here on the show, mm -hmm. they are heavy. But yeah, they, they're 16 channels, and it's 1,300 watts per channel within that chassis so uh in highgate we've got three of them mm -hmm. four of the channels actually aren't even used in that setup and here at the show we've got one that's driving it so basically no uh, human tall racks uh, no is, is I, I, th I think the rack we've got here at the show is is 16 new or something like that you oh. know so it's that big it's... oh wow so then that, that's quite impressive and so much power in uh, such, yep. such a small small enclosure yeah uh, and i i think you know that the, the loudspeakers the subwoofers obviously they take up space but we want to make sure that you know especially in in residential properties super yachts especially even more so space is a premium hmm. you know every square meter has a cost attached to it and hmm. clients don't want to be paying for space yeah. for just equipment which is big yeah yeah it's it's not a secret because I already visited the showroom in mm. uh, Highgate and I do have that footage and it's just waiting to be edited. Stay tuned and uh, hopefully really soon I, I will release that video as well. Yeah. Um, on this channel here, uh, I really like to dig into the technical details. Uh, so you mentioned that uh, at Highgate uh, you used soccer mm -hmm. uh, speakers. Would you tell a little bit more uh, yeah. about their specifics? <clears throat> and, uh... So so the Soka loudspeaker is, uh, was designed actually with Hyrus in mind. Um, you know, we often call the, the Siva the, the big brother of the Soka. Mm -hmm. If we go back actually to, to Siva, Siva was designed to replicate K2, which is one of our second biggest boxes used in tours, festivals. Mm. You've got your Ramstein t-shirt exactly. on. <laughs> um, you know, you, you, if you go to a Ramstein show, they will have K2 at that show. Siva was designed to be a very slim, small, discrete form factor. I mean, I say small, it's taller than me. Um, <laughs> probably taller than you as well. Yeah, probably, yeah. <laughs> um, its form factor is very discrete, but it has the same output capacity as a K2 box. But it's used in museums, galleries, conferences. You'll see them here on the show floor being used in presentations, things like that. It has, it, we call it a collinear source. So it has mid-range drivers and it has HF drivers in a DOSC waveform guide. So that has a slight curve in the middle mm -hmm. and it's also um, angled so that essentially what we're doing is we're making the high frequencies coming out so it's super, super directional um, because that's what you want to be able to achieve at big distances. Um, it's very easy for low-end frequencies and mid-range frequencies to, to travel distance, but it's the high frequencies that, that struggle. So we, we're, through that waveform technology, we're guiding it basically to the listener. Mm -hmm. But that product was never designed for real, you know, integration um, within the fabric of a building. It, it, can be but it wasn't it's primarily kind of design so what our product management team wanted to do is create a product which had the same characteristics but could be integrated within a wall mm -hmm. so soaker is available as an on-wall product or an in-wall product and it has that same technology within it so even though you don't see the visible curve on the on the front grill because mm -hmm. the front grill is flat if you take the grill off it is behind that that curve yes. um and that's so that you, you're still getting that same um, technology within there. There is a slight reduction in SPL. Mm -hmm. I can't remember off the top of my head what that slight reduction is, but yeah. I think I'm, it's, I'm sure, uh, it's about 6 dB or something like that, less than a SIVA. Um, it's quite amazing because we, we launched, when we launched Soka, we launched the SB6 as well mm -hmm. subwoofer as a companion to it. That's a dual six and a half inch subwoofer. It's designed to fit within a standard wall joist when it goes in wall, um, and it's only 99 millimeters deep. It sounds beautiful in that configuration, you know, a pair of soakers with two SB6i or even four SB6. Sounds very warm, rich, like a hi-fi sound, but it doesn't necessarily have that low-end thump that mm -hmm. L Acoustics is known for because 
six and a half inch drivers. Um, so you can go up and use an SB10 with a Soka, yeah. hmm. or you can even use the Siva Low and Siva Sub with a Soka. And we've, we've done hmm. this, you know, we've kind of gone through and said, I remember we did a, just before we launched it, we did some listening sessions um, in Marcusi, which is where our headquarters are outside of Paris. And we did these listening sessions and we went, okay, how does it sound with the SB6, the SB10, mm-hmm. Siva Low, Siva Sub? And it just just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. The, the oh. Soka can all day long keep up. So it, it really depends on the application and what you're using it for as to what sort okay. of you're bearing. So it's a basically a miniature line array in your living room. Exactly right. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. We've, we've done hi-fi shows and things like that in the past and people kind of go, mm-hmm. L acoustics, you're, you're, you make PA, you, do, you, you don't mm-hmm. make hi-fi. And it's like, you have to remember what the ethos of L acoustics was right at the very beginning when, when, when the company was founded is, the whole intention was to make the artist sound as true to life as possible on a big mm-hmm. scale. The focus has always been about connecting the audience to the artist. We're just doing that in a smaller setting. Big thing for us at the show here is we're talking about shared experiences um, and improving the shared experience. Um, you know, Hyrus is about that um, and everything else we're doing is, is really about making sure everyone has the best experience, whether that's at a live event mm-hmm. or in their own home. One of the latest products in the L Acoustics uh, lineup is uh, X6i. Uh, I know <laughs> because mm-hmm. I've been there. I, I know they used uh, the, as a height channels yes. uh, at uh, Hyrus showroom mm-hmm. in London. Yeah. So, would you? Yeah. So, so the X6i about... is was launched last year at ISC um, here in Barcelona. That's a six-inch coaxial point source loudspeaker. Because it's on a height and it's coming down you, you want a big wide dispersion. Um, so if you were to put a, a, a you know a product like a soaker in the ceiling, it would sound yeah, bizarre it because it would be yeah. panning the sound the wrong way. Um, so having a coaxial point source is, is is much better for that kind of equal dispersion and almost you know like when you're in the shower, you want to yeah, be yeah. covered almost uh, like a wash light. It, it, yeah, it, yeah, exactly yeah. right, yeah. and and I, so you, you lead on to an interesting point there actually mm-hmm. of of you know going back to Hyrus and, and what it's about is when we're doing the design with Hyrus for for real projects is we talk about like designing with light mm-hmm. in lighting designers talk about painting room with light we're taking the same approach mm-hmm. but we're painting the room with sound if someone is interested uh, how would it be possible to experience Hyrus um, so the best thing to do would be to, to go on to lacoustics.com, l-acoustics.com, and on there we have a contact us form. Mm-hmm. Fill out that form. Um, one of our team will get in touch and, and arrange for someone to come to uh, our, our showroom in, in, in London. Um, we also are hoping to have further high-risk showrooms around mm-hmm. the world okay. in coming that's an, times as well. That's an exciting news. Because uh, I'm sure not all of your followers are in the UK or, or necessarily near London. So yeah. yeah. Really, if some of you is into a immersive audio and have a chance to visit the L Acoustics showroom uh, in London, uh, please try and do it uh, because that experience is on another level. So thank you very much for speaking. No, with my absolute here. pleasure. Thank you for having me. Okay, thank you. Great. Thank you, Tim.